speaking of uh, not making a whole lot of progress, um, got to talk about Sean Diddy Combs. So an associate of him, Brendan Paul, has been formally charged with one felony count of drug possession. He pleaded not guilty to the charges with his attorney telling TMZ will be dealing with this case in the courtroom, not in the court of public opinion. So this latest development um, has a lot of people wondering, why hasn't Diddy been charged? You know, we had that federal raid. Um, it seemed like things were moving along quickly, um, but nothing has happened since then. So what, what do you think the holdup is? I don't know, Christina. I'm very surprised that Diddy hasn't been charged yet. And this is why. There was certainly enough evidence to go into two of his homes. That means there's likely enough evidence to charge him as well and go to a grand jury and get an indictment now. There's the possibility that agents recovered so much evidence that they're still going through it. But really what we're talking about here and probably the best evidence in the case is video evidence. Diddy is allegedly not only participated in these sex acts with minors, but he recorded it, if you believe Cassie and some of the other plaintiffs who have sued them. And he also reportedly had a lot of cameras in his home. So maybe agents are sorting through that, but now it's been weeks with no charges in sight. So I got to tell you, I'm surprised. Yeah. So if you were Diddy's attorneys and now that so much time has passed, are you hopeful? Are you, are, is this like a legal win in their case or is this just kind of like a waiting game, I guess? I don't think this is a win for Diddy and his team. I think he will be indicted. And it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. There's so much evidence, so much allegations against them. Multiple victims have come forward that if I were Diddy's team, I would be prepared for charges and an arrest. Yeah. Is it almost maybe because, like there, like you said, there's so much evidence, maybe there's new things that they have uncovered that they weren't expecting, and then they're possibly building new charges against him as well? Potentially, yes. But it's almost May, and we are talking about allegations that came to light six months ago when Cassie first filed that lawsuit in November. So uh, I know additional victims have come forward and there's been other allegations and lawsuits, but law enforcement and agents have had months to talk to the victims and get the information they need. So they really should have it by now. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I know another case that took a lot of people by surprise was Harvey Weinstein's um, case being overruled. Um, talk to me a little bit about this. Like I said, uh, nobody saw this coming. So why did this happen? How did some mistake like this happen? And now uh, what happens going forward? Christina, I was very surprised that Weinstein's oh. conviction got overturned and the judge ordered, well, the judges ordered a new trial. Yeah. And this is why. When you have a criminal trial, you can have testimony of the victim, of course, that was sexually assaulted or raped, and he or she can testify as a victim. Mm -hmm. But you can also have what we call prior bad acts witnesses. Those are witnesses who may have been victimized, but whose conduct isn't charged. And that testimony can come in because it's relevant to the claims or defenses in the case. Now, in Weinstein's case, his sexual assault really follow the same MO or pattern. He would invite girls to his room, young women, and he would trap them and he wouldn't let them leave and he would sexually assault them. And when multiple victims are telling the same story, that's something that trial judges have a lot of discretion in allowing. So the case went up on appeal and the New York Court of Appeals, which is their version of the Supreme Court, barely ruled by a four to three majority that the trial judge made a mistake. I was surprised, and a lot of other lawyers were as well. So what happens going forward, and does this have any um, influence or any uh, consequences in his other case? Because he was also charged in Los Angeles as well. This was this is what happened in New York. So now, does anything affect that case as well, and what will happen next in New York? So the New York decision won't affect the California case. Mm -hmm. Weinstein still has to serve that 16-year prison mm -hmm. sentence, and New York law has no precedential impact on California. The district attorney has said, the district attorney in Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, who's also prosecuting Trump hush money case, has said that he will retry Weinstein. I really think the only question is, are the victims willing to go through that process again, go forward and testify? Obviously, he needs to respect the rights of the victims. But if they're willing 
to testify again and go through the whole process, I fully expect Weinstein to be charged again in a new trial. And one way or another, I think he's going to die in prison, whether it's New York or California. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty horrific for all these women to have to relive this over again um, because of a mistake. It is really sad, Christina, and sexual assault is the most underreported crime. Victims oftentimes don't come forward. Law enforcement doesn't take their allegations seriously. Prosecutors don't charge the cases because they're difficult cases. So if you look at the studies of the percentage of women who are raped, a very small percentage of those perpetrators are actually brought to justice. So sad uh, what the New York Court of Appeals did in this case.